Hello world, I'm Daryl from MakeCode, and today we're going to learn how to make a classic type of game, uh, which is a space shooter. And once you're on arcade.makecode.com, go ahead and select New Project. And I'm going to call this um, Space Shooter. And once this loads up, you'll see we have a code editing workspace on the right. And in MakeCode, you can edit uh, games in blocks, JavaScript, and Python. For this tutorial, we're going to stay in blocks. But the same principles apply to all three languages. All right. And on the left, you're going to see a simulation of our game. So right now, we don't see a lot. Um, let's add uh, some effects to the screen so we can start to see something. So in the Scene category, I'm going to scroll down to the Effects uh, bucket and drag out the Start Screen effect. And here I'm going to start the star field screen effect. So we have a bunch of built-in effects that you can use for many different settings. And the star field will be appropriate to our um, space shooter theme, uh, but you can imagine many other um, themes as well. All right, so we've got a little bit of a star field going on here. Now let's create our hero uh, character, which is going to be kind of the spaceship that we fly around. So I'm going to click on this gray square to open up the sprite editor. And my graphics are going to be pretty simple to start with. Maybe I'll make them more elaborate uh, as time goes on. I think I'll pick kind of a teal color. And I'm going to go for just sort of a pixelated, simple, swooping sort of shape here. So the idea is um, maybe these are going to be like the laser cannons. Let's add some orange. And. We'll sort of have a cockpit in this area, I think. And it doesn't need to be perfect. doesn't even need to be symmetrical to start. Um, I'm going to add maybe some racing stripes. Let me undo that. And um, let's add sort of a purple cockpit area. All right. This will be good enough for now. Go ahead and hit Done when you've uh, created your hero character. And now you can see our spaceship appearing kind of in the middle of the screen. Uh, now, we can't move around the spaceship yet. To do that, we're going to need to use controls. So go to the controller category and drag out the Move My Sprite with Buttons block. This will let us uh, move the ship around in sort of all directions. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you can move the ship right off screen. And that's not quite what we want for this game. So I'm going to go to the Sprites category, scroll down until I see the uh, Stay on Screen block. So this Stay on Screen block has a drop down. And there's many different properties you can set on Sprites. Um, and you can turn those properties on or off. In this case, we want to turn the Stay on Screen property on. And now what you'll notice is that the spaceship does not leave the screen. So stepping back to just kind of look at this little bit of code that we wrote, and this is indeed code, uh, we have an on start block. And inside of that nested to it, connected like puzzle pieces, we have four uh, other blocks. We call these statement blocks. And the way it works is when the game starts, we're going to run these four blocks in sequence. And they're all going to have their effect on the game. So we start the star field. We set a variable called my sprite to a new sprite that we're creating here that is of kind player and we'll get to kinds later and it has a visual of the spaceship and after that we set movement on uh, my sprite uh, to move with buttons and then we just set the stay on screen property to true and that's going to be the basic pattern we use for uh, pretty much everything we do in this game so this is great. This is all stuff that happens at the start of the game. But what if we want uh, you know, other things to happen, code to run after the start of the game? For example, let's say we hit the A button. We want to shoot some projectiles. So let's do that by going to the controller category and dragging out this on A button pressed block. So this is an event block. It looks uh, similar shape to the on start. And that's because the on start is also an event block. So the start of the program is an event. Uh, and when the A button pressed uh, is pressed, that is also an event. And on events, you can run code. 
All right, so on the A button pressed, we're going to create some projectiles. So open up the sprites category and scroll down until you see projectiles. And there's a few different ways to create uh, projectiles. I'm going to take this first block here. And a projectile is, um, well, first let's add the visual representation. So what color should these be? I'm going to say light blue, kind of, I think, goes with the theme of our ship. And it's going to be sort of teardrop shape that maybe just a little highlight of yellow in there um all right so now we have these projectiles so projectiles are 2d objects like our ship is a 2d object um and it will start firing from uh my sprite and it's going to have a velocity of 50 and 50. so vx and vy stand for the X and the Y component of a velocity. So velocity is like speed. Um, it you know, governs how fast things move across the screen. So just to show you what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna fire these projectiles and they're sort of gonna drift down to the right. And uh, like you probably have learned uh, before, we often uh, consider 2D objects on an X and Y uh, coordinate plane and with Y being vertical and X being horizontal. And in uh, Arcade, it's the same way. And unlike maybe in a math class or something, the origin of the XY plane in Arcade is the top left corner. So up here is where zero, zero is. And over here, it goes positive in the X direction. And down here, it goes positive in the Y direction. And that's standard for most video game systems, like if you open up Unity or any of the other uh, game editors, they generally work that way as well. Anyway, so our projectiles are going down to the right. And I want the projectiles to go straight in front of the ship. So I'm going to remove the Y component. And now, if I uh, hit the A button again, we can see the projectiles kind of move off to the right. Now I want them to move faster, so I'm going to put a larger uh, velocity here, maybe four times as fast. And let's see what happens. All right, so now we're shooting some lasers. I like it. Uh, or maybe they're missiles, whatever you want in theme. Um, okay, so we don't have any sort of challenge yet. So let's add some challenge elements. And I think some challenge elements are going to be enemy ships. Let's go to the game category. And I'm gonna drag out the on game update every um, 500 milliseconds block. So what this lets us do is run code at a certain time interval. So 200 milliseconds is two seconds. Um, and you can choose anything in between. You can write whatever you'd like. So I can have ships spawning off uh, on the right side of the screen coming at the player. And if they hit the player, uh, we're probably going to lose some life. And the player has to shoot back uh, at the enemies. So um, on game update, every 200 milliseconds, let's create some enemies. So I'm going to go to um, the sprites category and create a new sprite. And I'm going to rename this to uh, enemy ship. So what this is doing is it's setting a variable enemy ship to a new sprite. And we want this sprite to not be a player, but an enemy. And the kinds are going to be really important when we get to something called collision in just a moment. So first, let me draw kind of the visual of this enemy. So since I'm sort of this uh, crescent shape with a tail. Maybe I'll have the enemies be mm, very pointy, maybe swooshed and pointy. And uh, a nice side effect of this design is actually they're going to be kind of easy to hit to start off with because they have this sort of wide uh, vertical shape. Um, and that doesn't have a lot of uh, interesting look to it yet. So I'm just going to add some other colors in here. And um, let's, I don't know, some orange in the back. It doesn't have to be fancy. All right, let's say those are the enemy ships. Um, and as you can see, we have an enemy ship in the middle of the screen. That's not where we want it. And to control the position of a sprite, there's several ways to do that. There's the set position blocks, but actually I'm gonna do it uh, with this other block. Um, that is set my sprite X to something. And so I'm gonna set the X of the enemy ship um, to the right side of the screen. So 
The left side of the screen, remember the top right is zero, zero. So the left side is zero and the right side is going to be um, the whole width of the screen. So in the scene category, we have a screen width uh, block and this just represents the width is, um, you know, in terms of a number uh, of the screen. Great, so now we have the ship starting on the right. And next we want to um, place it, well, actually we want the ship to move towards us. So let's do that next. So I'm actually gonna select this block and say, Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V if you're on a Mac. And that duplicates this block. You can also right click and say duplicate. It's very useful to know how to duplicate blocks. And instead of setting the X, you can click this dropdown and you see all these different properties we have to use on, um, on sprites. And we already saw the effect of velocity up above uh, when we were creating projectiles. And so we're going to set the X velocity of the enemy ship to a negative number because we want it, want it to move to the left. And the reason why negative is uh, to the left is because this is zero, zero. So a uh, negative number will move it to the left. All right, so now we have ships coming across the screen. This is great. They're hitting uh, us and nothing is happening yet. But before I fix that, uh, I don't want them to march across in sort of a straight line. I want them to have a random placement here on the right. So to do that, we're gonna use randomness. So I'm going to select this block and uh, duplicate it. And I'm gonna set the Y component uh, to be something. So what I want it to be is a random value between the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen. To do that, I'm gonna go to the math category and I'm gonna say pick random and plot that in here. And I'm gonna say between, let's say 10 pixels uh, and the bottom of the screen um, minus 10 pixels. So I'm gonna go to the scene category, take screen height, that will be the bottom of the screen, go to the math category, drive the minus block, plot that in there, plot that in there and say minus 10. So why from 10 to minus uh, 10 of the screen height? That's so that the ships, um, don't aren't too far off the screen. The closest they'll ever get to the edge is um, 10, 10 pixels from the edge, which you know helps us as we're shooting. Otherwise, it's not clear that we would be able to uh, shoot the enemy ships coming at us. All right, great. We have enemy ships coming, but still it's not really a game. There's no interaction between our two ships yet. And to do most interactions uh, in most games, you use some form of collision or overlapping. Um, these are, uh, this is just an essential feature of every game. So uh, arcade games are no different. We're gonna go to the sprites category, you scroll down until you see overlaps. There's a bunch of blocks here to help you uh, with handling overlaps. And so there's a rather complicated looking block, but it's actually not too bad once we break it down. It says that uh, fire an event when a sprite of kind player overlaps with another sprite of kind enemy. And again, like the, as these other three events we have on start, on a button pressed and on game update, um, we want to run some code when this condition is true. All right, so uh, when the player overlaps the enemy, we want to lose some life. I think that's fair. Uh, we might have the enemy shoot in the future instead of us losing life. So by the way, in the info category, you can see uh, a bunch of blocks related to life. You, there's also countdown and score. Let me mute that. <laughs> uh, you can mute and unmute your game using this button here. Um, so we want to change the life by negative one. And uh, you can see once that happens, uh, we quickly lose the game. And so what happens is by default in uh, arcade, you have three lives. Uh, that's just our default. You can set it to whatever you want. In fact, let's set it to something else. So I'm gonna go to the info category and set life to five, let's say. And now you'll see kind of at the start of the game uh, that we have five lives. And, um, but how come one ship can destroy all of our lives? And so what's happening is that this event, uh, we're overlapping the enemy ship and therefore this event is triggering. And then the enemy ship is still around, the player is still around. And so a little bit later in time, the enemy ship is a little bit more overlapped 
and this event fires again. So we lose another life and another life and another life and another life. And so this is actually happening every frame. So the way video games all work is they work on something called a game loop. And updates to the game, like movement or graphic changes or logic uh, changes, happen at many frames per second. Um, so just all the time. Usually it's something that are like 30 or 60. Uh, very fancy modern games might happen up to 240 times a second. Um, and so in arcade, updates happen around 30 to 60 times a second. And so that means we're overlapping the enemy up to 30 to 60 times a second, uh, which is quickly depleting our five uh, lives. And if we were to have kind of a crazy number of lives, let's say we had you know, a thousand lives, you'll see kind of how fast they tick down. Let's say a thousand lives. All right, let's play again. And look at them tick down. So that's going at about a rate of 30 a second, I believe. Uh, but you could slow down the video and calculate that for yourself if you'd like. Um, so that's not quite the effect we want in the game. Sometimes uh, you do want to take advantage of the fact that you know overlaps happen all the time. But in our game, I think what we want is to destroy the enemy ship when it runs into our strip, ship. So I'm going to drag out this destroy block, and I want to destroy the enemy. Now, we have this enemy ship variable when we create the enemy. But the problem is um, this enemy ship variable is always set to the latest enemy uh, created. And that's not what we want when we're overlapping. Instead, we want to destroy the enemy ship that we overlapped with, which might be a very old ship. Um, and there's this other sprite block here that you can drag out and plop in uh, into other blocks. And what this block represents is the enemy that was part of this overlap. And that's going to be really important. This is called a local variable. Don't worry about that too much if that doesn't make sense. We're going to have plenty of time to use these in the future. All right, so now when the player overlaps an enemy, we lose a life and we destroy that enemy ship. So let's try that out. OK, so that ship was destroyed. That ship was destroyed. And notice that we're not ticking down to zero uh, you know, so quickly. Instead, we're losing lives one at a time, and the ships are going away one at a time until we lose the game. Great. Uh, one thing to make this slightly more exciting, exciting is we can add an effect to the enemy ships when they're destroyed. So this plus button, you'll see this on a number of blocks. You might have seen this uh, before on the with buttons block here. Uh, when you hit the plus button, you'll see some extra properties that you can set. Like, for example, on this one, VX, VY, this is the velocity uh, that we the ship moves around when you use the uh, buttons controls. So if I set this to you know 200, 200, then the ship should zoom around at twice as fast as it used to. And this can be really helpful um, for you know balancing your game to do whatever you want. In this case, I, the default of 100 by 100 is going to be just fine. Uh, anyway, so back to destroying the enemy. Let's destroy the enemy with an effect. And the effect is maybe I'll say, um, Hmm, disintegrate, that sounds promising. And 500 milliseconds, remember there's 1,000 milliseconds per second, uh, will take half a second to kind of destroy the ship. All right, let's see what happens. So there's the ship, it, just, uh, it gets destroyed. And so this is what we call a particle effect. The screen uh, star field background effect is also a particle effect. And particle effects are a very useful and awesome part of games that can really add a lot of flavor um, and sort of uh, good feel to the game. However, you want to be cautious with them. They can be one of the most expensive things in the game in terms of performance. So I'm sure you've all played games that got bogged down really slow. You couldn't move fast. Everything got jerky. And the reason why that happens is because uh, there was some problem with the game. It, maybe the game was trying to do too much for what your hardware could handle, and the game slowed down. And so particle effects can slow your game down. Um, but you know, for now, one, one or two at a time is never a problem. All right, so uh, we're destroying the enemy like that. And one other thing we can do to make it uh, slightly more exciting is if you go, uh, I believe here, actually, if you search for shake in the search box, uh, there's this camera shake block. So this is very handy, by the way, this search box. If you're looking for a block and you're not sure which category it's in, but you know something about it, maybe a few words, uh, you can search here. 
anyway, so we are going to do a camera shake uh, when we impact enemy ship. So that adds a nice jolt. You know, you really feel uh, viscerally feel the impact with enemy ships. Um, all right, so that uh, is looking pretty good. So now the enemies have the upper hand. Um, we cannot really win this game or gain any points or anything like that. Uh, the game, enemies will just slowly destroy us. So we want to add another collision, and that's between uh, our projectiles and the enemies. Right now, we can't shoot the enemies. So go to the sprites category, and just like before, we're going to drag out the on sprite of kind player overlaps block. And this time, we're going to say when a projectile overlaps an enemy, we want to run some code. All right, so let's think about what we want to happen. Uh, one thing is the enemy should be destroyed. Uh, later on, we might get to adding health to enemies. But to start, let's say that it's one shot per enemy. The other thing we want to happen is to remove the bullet uh, or the laser you know, that hit the enemy. Um, otherwise, you could have one bullet just cruise through all your enemies. And maybe that's what you'd want. And third, let's get some points. Uh, I think, you know. The player should get some reward for destroying enemies. So let's do all three of those. So I'm going to go to the sprites category and drag out a couple of these destroy blocks. Again, I'm going to use Control C, Control V to um, to duplicate a block there. And notice I just dragged these two uh, sprite and other sprite variables into these blocks. So again, the, I'm using the local variable uh, that refers to the projectile that was part of that collision and the enemy that was part of that collision that caused this overlap event to happen. So it's going to destroy both of them. Uh, let's just test that out real quick to make sure that works. There we go. Whew. We can uh, destroy enemy ships. Um, all right, so now that we're destroying enemy ships, let's also get some points. So I'm going to go to the input category and say change score by one. And this will give us one point per ship uh, downed. So there we go. All right, look at that. We're getting some points. The enemies don't stand much of a chance because I can fire pretty fast. And they're coming at me pretty slow. And uh, But there's a little bit of danger. You know, If I run into them, I'll lose a life. Uh, I don't have a way of gaining any life yet. Uh, but here's the basis of a game. So uh, I'm going to stop there today. And um tune in next time as we add things like health to enemies we want more weapons we want to uh, maybe have the game get more difficult as time goes on maybe have a boss appear there's all kinds of great ways you can take this game uh, and if you are following along pick any art you want and uh you know really go go wild there um and we'd love to see what you make uh all right i'm daryl uh, from MakeCode.